In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create in a box plot chart, basically the tooltip where we have all of these items below or stacked below each other, instead of having it normally as default, a long line. So let's start to explore how we can do this. So let's start to explore how we can wrap the text of the tooltip in the box plot chart in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do is, of course, get our default code. So make sure you go to chartjs3.com, getting started, scroll down here, copy this chunk of code. And by the way, this link is also in the description box, so you can just find it there as well. Once you copy that, and if you want to understand what this video, what this uh, code is, watch this video here, it explains it all. So once we have all of this text, we're going to paste that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this title, put that in there, <coughs> save, and refresh all right so now we have this and what we want to do now is to convert this into a box plot so we're going to search here and then eventually what i want to do here is a type is box plot but of course if you just do this this will not work we get an error because this uh, chart type doesn't exist yet so we need to get the reference of that so what we're going to do is if you would search on google you need to watch out here so i'm going to give you a quick warning there's a old version of this we just called chart js chart box and violin plot version 4. This is only working for Chart.js version 2. It's an older version. So don't use this. Well, it says your version 4, but it supports Chart.js 2 only. So we need to add another one. To get this, basically we need to go to the Unpack or Unpackage website. So just go to the Unpackage website and search specifically for this item here. Chart.js-chart-box-plot. As you can see, it's slightly different. And this is the latest version is version 3.6.0 all right so i need to get this specific link here as you can see that's in here but i'll show you just to get it easy you can see this here you just go here to build and then in the build you scroll down here we're going to search and grab uh this one here for some reason i need to get this one to make it work maybe i'm missing something or doesn't matter we click on this then we get this here once you have this here, you're on the right item, just only the URL needs to be uh, adjusted. You can see here the browse, delete the browse from the URL, press enter, and you get now the entire code, which is exactly the same as my other tab here. All right, so this is the link that we need. Copy this link. And then what we go here is we're going to go here. Oh, sorry, I need to go up here. We're going to make a new JavaScript file, copy this, put it in there, cut out this item and paste that in here make sure chart.js library <clears throat> is loaded first and afterwards we load the dependent uh, library regarding to the box plot so that's very important because here it needs to load certain values of chart.js before it will trigger this so if i save this now and refresh now you should have a working chart except it has no value yet because we didn't define them we have here this data but this data is not being recognized so what we're going to do now is the following and i'm going to break them down but i'll be honest with you i don't know really in depth what this means i am i guess this is a very scientific topic and sadly enough i have no knowledge about this if i would i would uh, definitely explain more and if anyone would know some good resources for me i'm very open to learn this stuff anyway so we have here basically this and i just delete this one basically what i'm going to do here now is i'm going to create a uh, uh, item here based with the data and this data is another array in here and within here we're going to put in specifically seven items so the first one i'm just going to put in values here that i estimate that might be as correct as possible and this one is the minimum whiskers all right so then we have the next value would be let's say 20 and then we're going to put in here is the lower quartile and this is basically the 25%. Afterwards, what we have another one is the median. So the median is 75. And then we're going to say here, the median. <clears throat> Once we have that, we have number 60. And the 60 would be the center or the interquartile. So it's a interquartile. Uh, interquartile. And this is probably iqr so next one would be 40 and this would be the mean and then once we have that one we have another we have two more to go 
80, which would be basically the upper quartile, and the upper quartile, uh, quartile, make sure we spell it correctly, is 75%. So basically, three quarters, and I guess this one here would be 50%. That's what I guess, but I'm not sure about that. And next, we have basically, now we have the min whiskers, and here finally we have the max whiskers, so I'm going to put this on 80, 5, and we'll just say here, max whiskers. All right, so now we have this here, and if I save this, we have one item here. Just to make it a bit more appealing, I'll just put in a few more, just for the sake of it. Let's copy this, comma, paste, comma, paste, comma, paste, comma, paste. All right, save that, refresh, and we get all these colors here, and you can see what is happening. We have a lot of data points, and all these data points are just being stacked into this, and this is basically the problem if you would have, and there was the question, what to do with the tooltip because the chart is only a small rectangle or a square of 300 pixels and this here already is far too massive so let's start to break this down here and a few things i will probably remove eventually from the tooltip is basically the weekly sales we can probably remove and probably this color box i think this color box has not a real value for us so we can figure out if we can remove that one as well so what i want to do here is the following in the options, we're going to go down here and we say plugins, and then we're going to play around with the tooltip. And the tooltip we want to play around. What we're really going to do here is what we call callbacks. And a callback is basically the following uh, it doesn't have a value, and what it does is it will grab the value from elsewhere. So when JavaScript is loading it, and it will wait here for the value, and the value is basically a reference to somewhere else. So basically, it says, hold on, JavaScript, let me get the value that would be elsewhere. Then it grabs the value and then returns that value and then eventually JavaScript continues on. That's a callback in essence. So basically it's like if you would imagine it, you call to a company and the company says please wait and they call another company to get the answer that you are asking for. And then once they have that, they, they, they uh, go back to you and say this is the answer. Same methodology. Alright, so what we want to do here is the following. We're going to look for the... Uh, um, we have the callbacks here, and then in the callbacks, specifically what I want to pinpoint is here the labels. So we're going to do here in the labels, but what I need to do before I even do this, well, let's do this first. So I'm going to show you this context. This is a callback functionality with the function here. We're going to put in this, and if I do your console log, we get here the context, which would eventually show all the data. If I refresh now, and then We'll make sure we have a comma here, we get this error, you see here, no comma, and then you get an error. Alright, so this works, but now you can see it's all missing. It's not really missing. We don't return anything anymore, meaning we don't uh, display it anymore on screen. But what we have is, in our console log, we can find all the information here. And if you go here to uh, parse, you'll find all the values that we need. So what I want to do now is, before we even get this i want to first of all undo this or don't delete this but just comment this out the reason why is i need to know the structure of our toolkit so let's look at our structure but well, the first one is weekly sales so i don't care about that one but the next one would be min 20. in essence if i'm not mistaken it should be this here but just to be sure because sometimes it might be the it might change or anything so i'm going to say here min 20 and that will be eventually also the structure how we want to do it so next one would be uh, 25 uh, quantile all right so I use quartile but you also can use quantile so I'm up to you so we can say here um, what is it 25 percent quartile or quantile whatever you want maybe there's a difference if there is let me know uh, all right and then we say that that one is 45 although the number itself will not matter much however we just grab them for now Next one will be the median of 60. So we have here median 60. Next one will be the mean of 58.57. So we say here mean 58.571 if I'm not mistaken. Question is do we need this amount of data? So I will show you later on how we can reduce this if necessary. So next will be 75 quantile or quartile which is 77.5 so we say here 75% the quartile 
is 77.5. And then finally, we have here basically the max, and the max is 85. Max equals 85, and I have a feeling that we're missing something. Are we missing a specific item? Let's double check. So we have your one, that's the min, and then we have the quantile. All right, then we have the median, six, and then we have the mean, 58, and then we have 75. Uh, percent that is 77 and a max. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six items, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so that would mean that we're skipping the interquartile or the interquantile. So, if necessary or not, well, I, we can see if we can get the values of that. However, I'll just not do that one. So, I, su I assume that this, this scientific chart box plot is here done for a reason and I, I am not an expert on this so that's why I can't say anyway what I want is basically only this because this is what I want to show you is we go into the parse don't go into the raw the raw will be just the raw data but basically it's being calculated into whatever it is so what we want to do here is the following you can see here all of this value so how do we extract one of them let me show you so you have this context here all right, so we go to parse. Then you have to go to max. For example, I want the max value. You see your parse dot max. All right, so we say a content dot parse dot max. Oh, sorry, not like that. Sorry, that's forbidden. We have to do it here down. Save that. So if I do this now, you can see you now it's always eighty five because all of them are eighty five. And if I change that, uh, uh, the max value. Let's make this ninety, eighty eight, eighty seven, eighty six. And there you are. Save that. Refresh. 90, 88, uh, and there you are. So it's working nicely. All right. So that's basically the number. And you can see it's automatically recognizing the moment we hover over a specific element, it will recognize the, or the matching value with that. So now what I need to do here is the following. I'm going to create here an array. And this array is necessary because what we need to do is we need to put the item on the next line consistently. So I'm going to say a constant array. And you can give this array any name. Maybe we can say here two of a box box plot plot uh, values. I'm just making it up. Alright. So this is a array and this array will consist of the items that we have here. So what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use uh, template literals. So template literals, so that means I'm going to use backtick backtick. If you want to know where's the backtick on your on your keyboard, below the escape button, or at least on your MacBook, you have this. These are the backticks. So they're not single quotations. There's a big difference. And because of this, so we can use the object literals, or sorry, template literals. So we can say your whiskers. And then we can say your whiskers, I guess, um, min. I'm just going to put it like this. And then what I want to do is I want to grab this, uh, this certain value with that. So all I have to do here is basically this context parse and then we say dot min that's a normal way here well you won't even be able to see it now but that's basically the one so I'm going to say here but to do this this is a variable so I need to use your dollar sign and then curly braces once I did this and let me just do a return then return box plot array save that then refresh you can see here now we get the whiskers min all right so now we get this so what I want to do now is I just want to go into parse so do context dot parse for the console log so we can find all the information we have all right so we have the whiskers that min and then whiskers that max min and max i guess this is identical but we could even do it like this just to be sure so we say here whiskers uh it will be whiskers min all right then we have another one here we put a comma we say whiskers max and this will be max so although this one isn't under, so I need to put here another space. So I'm going to say here another one is the 25% quartile or quantile. It's up to you what you want to use. Quantile. And then here, the value. What is the quantile? Q1. That is 45. That's why you can see here. So all we do here is, I just copy this. I just put in here, say Q1. All right. Now we have that. Next one here, quantile or the quarter, Q3. Uh, I guess we still need to have the median, but that's all right. I'll just put in the, here the 75, so we can do that one quickly. That's Q3, that's easy to remember. Next one would be 
the median and the median should be here below so we say here this and then we say here median is uh, 60 I guess that's fine all right so the median is 60 so what I will do is we can just say here, median and then here put that in there that is 60 median finally here is the mean so we say here the mean and the mean colon all right what we're going to do here with the mean where is the mean mean is 59 all right put that in there we want to copy this put that one in there cut this out put it there save that the comma here another comma there we save this all right so now this is all done so later on we have to just check with this number here if everything is correct all right, so we get this, and you see the mean is a massive problem here. And I have this quantile and quartile. I guess we can remove all of that, but I also want to remove that space here before. There's basically this box, so we're going to remove that as well. So what I want to do here is, uh, first of all, let's solve the mean. And do we have any other item that has also a X amount of values? Well, I guess only the mean. So many decimals, so I'm going to remove that one. So to do this, the mean, I need to play around with this. So I'm going in here, I will say constant, and this will be the mean. And the mean equals basically this. Put it in there, and then we say a dot to fix, and then, well, how many decimals is normal? I saw here, consider three decimals, so I will put in three decimals. But you can put in three, two, one, zero, and it will automatically grab that number and uh, I round it up or down. So then I grab this mean here, put this here. If I save this now, refresh. Now we get the mean here, and I just remove the quartile and the quantile, and just only use one. I guess it would make more sense. So just to we'll keep it clean, save. There we are. So now we have this very concise. All right. Next thing is the color box. So this basically is called the color box in the tooltip. We're going to remove that. So to do that, we have to go here in the tooltip itself, and then we're going to say here display colors. And I'm going to set by default the set on true, so I'm going to say here false, comma, save. Let's see if this now removes. All right, there we are. So now we remove this, and I guess here the upper item is still being shown here because that's basically the title. We can remove that, but in this case, I'll just leave it in here. I have a whole video for that, by the way, if you want to understand uh, adjusting everything in the tooltip. I have a whole video for that as well. So this is basically the way how we can minimize or basically wrap our text, um, putting them down. Just use arrays. So, and basically this is how we can play around with everything. So if you want to, for example, learn even more about the tooltips, this video here, which shows you how to add more information in the tooltips and charges, will cover everything what you need to know about tooltips. Maybe we can remove the title with the Monday and the Tuesday or change it to anything you want as well so it's highly recommended to explore this video as well if you want to do more customization on your tooltip